take a moment to think about the last time someone provided to you a word of encouragement. Maybe it was a note, maybe it was a hug, maybe it was a handshake. Maybe this encouragement came to you from a friend, from a family member, a loved one, or maybe it was from a total stranger. Now think about a time that you have provided someone a word of encouragement. What inspired you to do it? Did you see the person was going through something and you could tell that they needed a friend? Maybe you were the stranger who was providing encouragement and the person who you provided that word to was someone you unknowingly made their day. It is no secret that encouragement in the form of a note or a kind word can provide a little hope. It can boost self-esteem. It can provide support for someone we know who needed it. Or it can uplift someone we didn't know who needed it. Today's reading from Hebrews is, a, is curious because the end is about encouraging one another in our lives and ministries as Christians. But it seems to do so in a Greek word that means to bother or to provoke somebody. So are we then to be so obnoxious in our encouragement, over-insistent in encouraging one another? Are we to encourage one even when it oversteps a boundary? This week we talked at our Friday worship service with the college-age students about what gives them encouragement and what gives us encouragement and how we might give it to others. The range of answers with college students is and always will be surprising to me. One student responded, I need my friends to provide encouragement to me when I am feeling like a mess. And my friend might respond to me, but you're a beautiful mess. <laughs> Or a student may be down on themselves and the friend responds with encouragement like, how can somebody so wonderful, so awe-inspiring, so absolutely amazing be down on oneself? In the hit TV show from a few years ago, Parks and Rec, Leslie Nope, played by Amy Poehler, encourages her friend Anne Perkins with, Anne, you are a beautiful, magical, tropical starfish of the ocean. You are so amazing. Here is where the encouragement from the Hebrew scripture is talking about lies. That we must be so forward, <clears throat> so outpouring in our love as Christians, so almost aggressively complimentary in our encouragement so others know that we Christians are called and are here to uplift. We are not doing here to harm. We are here to love and to gain nothing. This same spirit of encouragement, believe it or not, is also found in our gospel reading for the day. Categorized as Jewish apocalyptic literature, Mark dives deep into some pretty bleak world-ending scenarios and thoughts. Wars, rumors of war, nations rising against nation, earthquakes, and famine. So you're probably sitting in your pew right now, definitely thinking, um, Russ, that doesn't exactly sound comforting and encouraging. And in that case, you would be correct. It is not comforting to think about the end of times, but hear this good news. We as Christians, as people of hope, what God did through Christ as an action of hope, that God's kingdom is one that is upside down, where the poor are uplifted and death sting is no more. Death will not have the final word and every tear will be wiped from their eyes. Jesus isn't saying that this is going to happen tomorrow. In fact, he says 
many will come in Jesus' name and say that they are the second coming, that they are the ones that we should be following, when in we reality, we still wait. We still wait, and Jesus is saying that in that waiting, not everything is going to be okay. But what we must hold fast to is to one another, holding fast, providing encouragement, even when it feels like a lot, providing that little piece of hope. In our reflections, as we continued to reflect with this group of college students, one of my students said, I am a huge nerd. She's like, I love the Avengers, Marvel Avengers series. And I really hope I am not spoiling this for anyone by telling you that Marvel, the Infinity War movie, ends with not much hope. Another student chimed in, it seems the same way on the hit show Grey's Anatomy, season after season ending with no hope. And yet, a rescue of Tony Stark at the beginning of the next movie in the Marvel series, The Avengers, begins a reassembly of the team, the beginning of that piece of hope in the darkness. Every few years in my own, as I said to the students, I was like, well, I'm also kind of a nerd, and I love the Lord of the Rings series. And every year, my family and I, we rewatch the Lord of the Rings series in bits or pieces around the holidays. So one year, we might watch the Hobbit trilogy, and the next, the Fellowship of the Ring through the return of the king. And Frodo and Sam Wise, his friend, the halflings or the hobbits, and a fellowship are banded together to destroy a powerful ring. They encounter in their long journey one of people trying to throw them off track, people who want the ring of power for themselves, including the fellowship who almost turn on one another, greedy for that power. There, in a moment in the second movie, The Two Towers, the group thinks, and the viewer does too, that they're not going to make it. They have been stung by a large spider that sends them into a coma, and so it really feels like they're going nowhere. But after a rescue, Sam says this quote to Frodo. It's like in the great stories, Mr. Frodo, the ones that really mattered, Full of darkness and danger they were. Those were the stories that stayed with you that meant something, even if you were too small to understand why. But I think, Mr. Frodo, I do understand that there is some good in this world, Mr. Frodo, and it is worth fighting for. There will always be hope. And as a people of hope, we believe that in the unrest, in the toil and the turmoil, that some, something good, something new is coming. I want to share a story one of the students shared from Friday and an observation from the University Counseling Services at BCU. This student said, TikTok, yes, however you feel about the social media platform is not the purpose of the story. Content creators are now using the phrase that college students feel like they're in the red zone. That college feels the most stressful before Thanksgiving break in these weeks leading up to Thanksgiving. For VCU especially, there's no fall break in October. No two full days off the, for the whole semester until the week of Thanksgiving. So stress levels are high and the end does not feel in sight. Coupled with University Counseling Service, who met with some of our campus ministry colleagues on Friday, reported that students are not eating. And we're not talking about body image, but it is because of the cost. The cost of inflation so high at this point that while some students are on the meal plan, a large majority are not. I tell you these stories to report honestly what is going on around us. I tell you these things so that we can faithfully respond together as God's people. 
that we respond in this same and creative way as we enter into this season of encouragement. Christ the King, Advent and Christmas Tide, Epiphany, encouraging one another through by providing hope to college-age students in our lives, reminding them that the end of the semester is in sight, that they will move on to the next one, that fall break is just a week away, and that winter recess is less than a month away. Churches like Grace and Holy Trinity make exam goodie bags for students and write notes of encouragement to VCU students so that they know that there is somebody that is praying for them. One student on Friday in worship says, I pray as I patrol in my security job. As I walk, I want people to know that I provide encouragement through the act of prayer. I provide encouragement through the act of prayer just so that people know, just so that you know, just so that I know, just so that every student knows that there is someone, something much bigger than them that is providing just a little bit of hope right when we and they need it. May it be so in my life and in hers. Amen.